In this video, we will focus on the mechanics of feeding transition calves. You probably have not given it a lot of thought, but how we serve those meals to our transition calves is actually really important. The golden rule is no more than three stressors at a time for your calves. Because they were recently weaned, grouped, and relocated to a new home, transition calves may be some of the most stressed animals on your farm. Making sure their feed is easy to find and consume will help reduce the stress of transition. First, they need to be able to find their feed in their new home. Up to this point, their milk, feed, and water were in the same area every day, but now things have changed. As most pens require calves to stick their heads through slant bars, headlocks, or a feed rail, and the feed is most likely separated by a curb. Putting a temporary bunk inside the pen at calf height on the fence line will help calves consume feed more quickly. The goal is to get them eating five to seven pounds of starter within a few days of moving. When looking at your current transition area, or perhaps building plans, consider the comfort of your calves as they eat. Remember, they can't stretch their necks very far. Raising up the feed will allow for easier consumption. The perfect feed height for your facility will vary based on several factors. It is also ideal to have the feed floor offset from the scrape alley. Curb widths tend to run 8 to 10 inches in most barns. When combined with curb height, that is quite a distance for the calf to reach. The slant bar or headlock can also add another three to four inches of stretch. For an eight to 10 week old calf, that is a big distance to get the feed. Feed flicking is a good indication your calves can't reach the feed. You'll see a lot of particles scattered beyond the pile of feed because calves are trying to pick it up with the end of their tongues. You will also see irregular eating patterns if the feed space is uncomfortable. Calves will initially eat off the ends, but they should begin to clean up the bunks over time. If the same area is routinely the last one cleaned up, there may be a reason why. Another factor is whether you have a scrape alley or bed pack all the way to the feed bunk. If you have a bed pack close to your bunks, it may reduce the feeding height to a point where calves have to be on their knees to eat. This will slow down intakes rapidly. Having bunks that will rise with the bedding or a more frequent clean out will help. Also look at the headlock or slant bar width. Over time, this also needs to be adjusted based on the size of the animal. A cable across the bars can help contain smaller animals and can be removed as the animals grow. Headlocks are not generally recommended for animals just transitioning. They tend to have a hard time figuring out the concept of raising their head. If you go with headlocks, be prepared to tie one open and watch for the non-eaters. Water is equally important. In a lot of cases, we place the water where it is safe from the skid loader. It may be enclosed on two or three sides of the cement wall, up on a curb, tucked between gates, etc. In these cases, it may be hard for the calves to find or reach. When placing waters on a curb, allow for enough room for the calf to stand comfortably and drink. Make sure the curb does not get slick when wet or it can become even more challenging for the calf. Also consider how you're going to clean the waters. Where does the water drain and how does it work in the cold of winter? There's nothing worse than an ice hill for calves to climb when they're adjusting to their new surroundings. When thinking about transition feeding areas, I encourage you to look at the size range of your animals you're working with and how that might require adjustments throughout the building. This is not a one size fits all building plan. Work closely with your builder, nutritionist, and veterinarian to come up with the best plan as all three have different perspectives and want to do what's best for your calves.